Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah. Many people or some people take exception to speaking about people like Faisal al Jamaiki uh, or Abdullah al Faisal and other individuals who are plain and simple dua to takfir. They are callers to the creed, the itiqad of takfir. And much of their itiqad or their methodology goes against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and that's the reason for speaking about such individuals. And individuals such as that and their followers, those who they influence, can sometimes be the most dangerous from amongst the enemies within Islam that the Muslims face. That they distort the religion of Islam, the beauty of Islam, and the pristine form of Islam, which was revealed by Allah to his Prophet وسلم, and practiced and codified by his Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een and the tabi'een and the itba'a tabi'een, those first three generations. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu said, خَيْرَ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam also mentioned about the sinfulness and the wickedness of the Khawarij and that they would be with us till the end of time and that we should fight them. And that they are from the people of Ahl Bid'ah. And the Salaf also used to, uh, you know, had some different views regarding the Khawarij. Most of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, ibn Ajma'een, if not all, except I believe it was Hassan or Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala, anhuma, who made takfir of the Khawarij. But most of the uh, Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, ibn Ajma'een, uh, held that the Khawarij were. Uh, re rebels, rebellious, wicked sinners, you know, that they were a group, a sect, the first sect in Islam that we should be concerned with. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, in one hadith mentioned about the Khawarij, al Khawarij Kilab al Nar, the Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. And we know that uh, uh, a, a trait which is madhmum, it is a sinful trait, it's a trait none of us want to be possessed or be described with because it is a trait of the people of Ahwa and the people of Bid'ah and innovation in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who make takfir of the leaders and takfir of the Muslims and consider the Muslims to be munafiq for praying behind the Imams and all the other arguments that Ahl Bid'ah wa Ahwa hold regarding this issue of takfir and tabdi' uh, or tafsir. And the Prophet والسلام, when describing the Khawarij and describing the head, the first who the historians, the Muslim historians and the Hadith scholars attribute to being the first from amongst the Khawarij, According to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam, this man, Dhul Khawaisara, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and accused him of not being just with regards to the war booties, the war bounties. And this is the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam. And so, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, you know, leave me Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam so that I can so I can kill this munafiq. I can cut his head. You know, you're talking to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like this. I'm not having it off with your head. This is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I more or less, I seek refuge in Allah. And yet to hadith al-nas anni aqtul ashabi. I seek refuge in Allah from the people saying that I, meaning the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, killed my companions because these people met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were Muslim. But yet they had wicked mannerisms with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from them would come an even more wicked people. 
And these people, people like Faisal Jamaiki, and people like Abu Qatada Filistini and Abu Muhammad, uh, Abu Muhammad Al Maqdisi, and Abu Hamza Misri, and Kathir and Kathir, Kathir, men uh, other than them. There's so many other than them that it's it's beyond. But these are famous ones that are known in the West. That they are the inheritors of that methodology. They are the inheritors of that methodology. Instead of being the inheritors of the Prophet or the Prophets, alayhim afdal salatu was salam, they are the inheritors of the menhaj, of the khawarij and ahla bid'ah wal ahwa. The Prophet sallallahu then said to Umar, uh, said regarding uh, this man to his sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala ajma'een, he said, in, uh, in hadha, وَأَصْحَابُهُ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرْآنَ لَا تَجْ لَا يُجَاوِزْ هَنَاجِرِهِمْ وَيَمْرَقُونَ مِنْهُ كَمَا يَمْرَقُ السَّحْمِ مِنَ الرَّمِيَ مِنْ رَمِيَ The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in Sahih Muslim, he said, coming from this man and his companions are those, they read the Quran but it will not pass beyond their throats and they will enter it meaning enter Islam similar to the way a an arrow passes into uh, its prey or passes through its target and so from this hadith some of the ulama said that the Khawarij were not, uh, you know, they make takfir of the Khawarij because they said due to this hadith and other evidences that they actually enter Islam and then they exit it, similar to the way the arrow exits its prey. For so, so for this reason, some of the ulama make takfir of them. However, I hold the view, which is most, if not all the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, mijma'in, didn't make takfir of them, uh, but rather held that they were rebellious, wicked, mubtadi'ah, in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this lets us know these are wicked and sinful traits. To be of those people who make spend their time and efforts and energies making takfir of the uh, all the Muslim countries. Without any duwab, without any criterion. They just say plain and simple, oh, they don't rule by the shara. That's it. That's mainly their hujjah. And without looking at any of the shurut of takfir, or the muwan, those things which prohibit takfir. So the shuru meaning the conditions for takfir. And the muwan, meaning those things which prohibit from making a takfir upon a specific individual. Because takfir is divided into two takfir mutlaq or takfir ma'ayin. Takfir mutlaq meaning the general takfir, whoever does such and such, they have disbelieved. Takfir ma'ayin is when you practice, when you implement that hukum, that ruling upon a specific individual this is called takfir ma'ayan and that's where you look in begin to look into the shurut the conditions about individuals or particular groups do they fit that criterion of being disbelievers in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i want to end with this important statement which shows the importance of speaking about these individuals and calling them out and refuting them for those who have the ability to do so that we need our scholars, which have done an excellent job in dealing with these jama'at and these groups and making clear. And we need our students of knowledge in the various countries to speak up and deal with these shabahat because they influence the youth. These people, some of them are very charismatic like Faisal, where certain youth are really attracted to his speech and his dawah and his blatant. It's like Donald Trump amongst the white American uh uh, a certain constituency of mainly white Americans who feel threatened by other minority groups. And he speaks the talk that they like. Even if his policies may go against a lot of their interests, but he still talks, he still speaks and highlights some of the issues that they want. He can appeal to them. He speaks as plain New Yorker English, which appeals to them as he is seen as an individual from amongst them. Likewise, Faisal and some of the other du'ata shar 
that they're able to speak the language of the people to attract them. And this is a very dangerous thing. That does not mean they're on the haq because they speak your language. But the ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat, the reality of something is in its substance, not in its claim, not in the claims made about it. Listen to the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim and then we'll end. Qala Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, waladhi saha ana nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, dhimmihim min atawaifa ahla bid'a hum al-khawarish fa innuhu qad thabata fihim al-hadith min wujuh. كلها سحا لأن مقاتلهم حدثت في زمان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مقالاتهم حدثت في زمان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وكلمه رئيسهم. طيب. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم القيم said he said and what has been authentically narrated on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is considering them a blameworthy sect from Ahla Bid'ah, meaning the Khawarij. And then he said, Hum al Khawarij, they are the Khawarij, meaning the Khawarij are from Ahla Bid'ah. And what has been authenticated about them from Hadith in various ways, and all of them being sound, is their... Uh, their... Uh, their statement or their view which was manifest during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he spoke to him meaning he spoke to the to the leader of the Khawarij which was Vul uh, Khawaisara then he said Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said وَأَمَّا الْإِرْجَا وَالرَّفْضِ وَالْقَدْرِ وَالْتَجَهِمْ وَالْحُلُولِ وغيرها من البدع فإنها حدثت بعد الأقراض عسر صحابة رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين وكلما أظهر الشيطان بدع من هذه البدع وغيرها أقام الله لها من حزبه وجنده من يردها طيب ابن القيم then said as for إرجاء meaning the مرجاء those who believe Iman, that, that uh, actions are not a part of Iman in their various forms and their various uh, sects of, uh, that possess characteristics, characteristics of irja, of being the murjia. Warafth, meaning the Rath of the Shia, who may take fear of the Sahaba and, and their various other beliefs that they hold. Waqadr, and the people who, the Qadriya, who denied the divine destiny of Allah subhanahu the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either some of them believe that uh, human beings have no uh, no ability to do anything, that we're almost like we're puppets. The Jabariya, they're some of the extreme form of the Qadariya. And then you have the groups who believe that, uh, uh, that human beings have full control and Allah has no control. So they actually... Uh, or negate some of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his ability and his all-knowing all and so on and so forth, his, his ilm. With tajahim and the jahmiyyah, those who say the Qur'an was uh, created and that say that, uh, that uh, negate the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, hulul, meaning the extreme uh, sufiya, that uh, believe that Allah, in their various forms of belief, some of them believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere, or Allah is one with everything, and so on and so forth from their bid'ah kufriya. So he said, وَغَيْرِهَا مِنَ الْبِدَعَ And other than it from bid'ah, meaning those are some of the bid'ah, and that was the bid'ah, those uh, mubtadi'ah, those main classifications up until the time of Ibn al-Qayyim. You know, those were some of the main categorizations of the various types of bid'ah and the people of bid'ah. But, of course, there's many other from amongst that are divided and split off from those groups and sects. And he said, all of this happened after, basically, the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in, or began uh, during their time and after. And he said, every time the shaitan brought an innovation 
from those various types of bid'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send his, his Hizb, Hizballah, the uh, party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his soldiers to refute them. So this is the job of Ahl al This is the beauty. This shows you the importance of speaking against bid'ah, that which is a threat to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we adhere to the principles and remain on a pristine course of guidance in Suratullahi Mustaqim, except by defending that path. That if we don't, we end up like the Jews and the Christians who went astray, who let their desires begin to rule and arbitrate instead of going back to the book that was sent to them, and instead of going back to the messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, that were sent to them. And so we cannot follow, as the Prophet sallallahu said, let to, you'll follow the way of those who uh, came before you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever resembles a people, he is from them. So this is a very dangerous thing for us to be misguided and follow these figureheads and these ideologues who call us to the hellfire. And I should have mentioned, of course, Ayman Zawahari and Bin Laden and, uh, and of course, Abu Bakr, a Baghdadi uh, uh, being some of the biggest and more recent uh, figureheads of Dalal and misguidance and sh shaitanism or shaitania and, and, and a devilish and evil call to the hellfire and bloodshed and fitna on the earth. So every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time a bid'ah arises, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his troops and his party to defeat them. And who is this party? This party is Ahl al-Hadid. This party is Ahl al-Ilm. Because they are the ones who really defend the aqidah and the methodology of the religion. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept their and forgive our evil and to preserve our ulama and bless our ulama to continue to go forward and clarify for us the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our students of knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them and increase them in ilm al-nafi, rizq al tayyib wa amal al so they can continue to share with us and help us to be better prepared to notice and be aware of the various forms of bid'ah and dalal. Wa kullu bid'atin dalal wa kullu dalalatin finnar wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.